Has Asus made the ultimate workstation for video editing, graphic design, motion design, and 3D modeling? In this video, I'm going to be putting the Asus ProArt StudioBook 17 through more than 14 benchmark tests to see if it can stand up to the challenge. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the exact prices of this model as we're heading through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want a discount on this laptop, you can head on over to Computer Upgrade Kings and use the discount code BEN3 to get a discount on this laptop or any other laptop over on their website. As always, let's start off with the build quality. Pulling this laptop from its box, you are met with an attractive steel blue all aluminum case. The top cover has a brushed aesthetic and is accented with gold, which I really like. This color choice is unique to anything I have ever seen on a laptop. I like the design choices they made to really set this laptop apart from the others in the Creative Professional Workstation category. This laptop comes with a suitable variety of ports. Now, as always, when I talk about the ports, make sure the ports suit your use case, your workflow. You could have the fanciest ports in the world, but if they don't fit your day-to-day -day life, they're essentially useless. So keep in mind when looking at the ports, if it fits your needs. As I pull open the lid, which can be done with one hand until it is about halfway open, and that's where it gets a little snug and I have to place one hand on the deck to keep the laptop in place, um, I'm greeted by a massive 17 inch, 16 by 10 IPS Full HD matte display. The hinges are strong and secure with very little screen flex between the two hinges. It is rated at 300 nits, has a refresh rate of 60 hertz, and according to my test, can reach a color gamut range of 100% sRGB, 89% Adobe RGB, and 100% DC IP3, all at a delta E of 1.39. So very great color accurate screen. Comes with an HD webcam for those all important video conferencing, uh, with a switch on the keyboard to turn the camera on and off so you don't get cyber spied. The keyboard deck is spacious. It is a mix of aluminum and plastic. I like this look a lot. The plastic comes with an attractive grooved texture, which is a neat touch. The StudioBook 17 comes with the Windows fingerprint unlock, a glass trackpad, and a non-numpad keyboard deck. Speaking of the keyboard deck, this may be my favorite keyboard I have ever ever used. It is very quiet, but has snappy keys that respond very well. And although it is snappy, it still has a soft push under your fingers. The glass trackpad is nice. The precision drivers are great and touch gestures on point, but things take a turn for the worse when you conduct a full click on the trackpad. It is clunky, loud, and sounds a little loose or unstable. But I will say this is my biggest complaint, so don't jet away from this video because I think you're going to be quite impressed by the benchmark results coming up here in just a minute. The StudioBook 17 runs quiet and cool in the benchmark test. It comes with five substantial events across the top of the keyboard deck, side panels, bottom cover, and back of the computer between the hinges. We will talk about just how cool this computer stays after the benchmark test coming up in just a minute. And if you are curious how this laptop stacks up against similar models, I have filmed a head-to-head -head review and you can check that out in the YouTube cards above. This laptop is thin and light, weighing in at 5.4 pounds and is comfortably below one inch thick at 0.72 inch. It is a great 17 inch on the go workstation when it comes to its form factor. However, Asus did not do themselves any favors when they put the 57 watt hour battery within this laptop. You can expect roughly four to five hours of web browsing battery life and roughly two hours of heavy design or editing work on the go. So if I were you, I would keep the charger with me when I'm out of the office. All right, now it is time to get into the good stuff. Let's see what this laptop is capable of running it through 14 different benchmark tests. First, let's talk about the specs of this model I'm reviewing. This laptop comes with the Intel 9th Gen Core i7 9750H, a 6-core 12-thread processor, the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 3000 Max q 
six gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 64 gigs of DDR4 standard RAM clocked at 2,667 megahertz, and a storage drive of two terabytes SATA SSD plus a 500 gig SATA SSD. Just putting this out there, I think this laptop would perform great in the 32 gigs of RAM variant if you're looking to save a little bit of money. Starting things out with Photoshop, which is the program I use to see how well this laptop will perform for photographers, illustrators, and graphic designers, as it is the most intensive program in the Adobe CC design suite. The Studio Book 17 handles all of these individual benchmarks very well and sits within the middle of the performance charts, making it a very suitable laptop for graphic designers, illustrators, or photographers. Moving on to the video editing benchmarks, I'm going to open up a 4K project with some B-roll and a variety of motion graphics and run it in the timeline to see how well it can handle playback. The Quadro GPU is able to run smooth playback in the timeline at full quality without any dropped frames. And for the render test, it is able to render out all of the 7,240 frames of the motion graphics in 3 minutes and 25 seconds, which is above the average for rendering time on that test. For the exporting test, I'm going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and export it out. Out of Premiere Pro, 4K to 4K export with full quality YouTube settings. It can accomplish this in 6 minutes and 54 seconds. And DaVinci Resolve, 4K to 4K export YouTube settings. You can do this in 11 minutes and 49 seconds. Now, if you want to save a little bit of time, uh, you can export this same clip to 1080p out of Premiere Pro in 2 minutes and 26 seconds and out of DaVinci Resolve in 4 minutes and 37 seconds. So really solid export times. Not the best I've seen on my channel, but very, very good. I'm going to discuss the thermals, component usage, and noise produced by each of these tests, but first let's take a look at how the StudioBook 17 handles motion design and 3D modeling. After Effects was not an issue for the StudioBook 17 as it pulled out mid to high range benchmarks on both the general After Effects tests and the rendering tests. As you see for the general test, it pulled out a 731 score, and for the render test, it pulled out a 590. Moving on to the performance and 3D modeling tests. Geekbench CPU single core got a 1209 and the multi core was a 6225. Sitting near the top of both single core and multi core performance in Geekbench, the StudioBook 17 is no slouch. For Cinebench R20, it received a 2733, which fell slightly lower on the Cinebench scores, but still on the upper end performance overall. For the Blender Classroom test, the GPU was able to finish that test in 5 minutes and 50 seconds, whereas the CPU was able to finish that test in 15 minutes and 13 seconds. Now, a lot of you have been asking for me to pursue 3D modeling tests in my reviews, and I have heard your requests, and here they are. For Autodesk 3DS Max, it received a 127.89. For Autodesk Maya, it received a 150.98. For PTC Creo, we see a 154.73. And for SolidWorks, it received a 107.68. Now, as you see, each of these tests have a few laptops in these scores right now, and as I continue to run more tests on my channel, you'll see more comparisons put there, and you'll be able to get a better gauge of how well each of these laptops handle these 3D tests. Now that we know how it performs in each test, let's take a look at the temperature, component usage, and noise during these tests. At idle, the fan was nearly unheard. It only kicked on occasionally, and when it did, it was about 31 to 35 decibels, which is less than a quiet library. For the Photoshop benchmarks, the fan noise was around 41 decibels, for the Premiere Pro 4K export, it reached up to 44 decibels. And for the Premiere Pro render, it reached up to 45 decibels. Now, for the export time, that is a very, very quiet laptop. So I'm very impressed with this laptop's ability to export at a really solid export time and be very quiet. And finally, out of DaVinci Resolve 4K export, we saw 44 decibels of fan noise. Now for the thermal test. At idle, the ProArt StudioBook 17 sits at around 38 degrees Celsius. During the 4K export, the CPU stabilized at around 75 degrees Celsius, and we saw on the high end an 89 degrees Celsius out of the CPU. During Premiere Pro 4K export, the GPU reached 69 degrees Celsius. Now, the DaVinci Resolve 4K export, the CPU stabilized at around 75 degrees Celsius, and we saw a high end of 89 degrees Celsius during the 4K export out of DaVinci Resolve. For the GPU out of DaVinci Resolve, we saw a 65 degrees Celsius. Now for the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmarks test, the CPU reached 52 degrees Celsius and the GPU stayed at a nice low 43 degrees Celsius. 
Now for the component usage. The Photoshop Puget Benchmarks test, we saw a high CPU usage of 100%, but really an average CPU usage of about 26%. The GPU usage for the Photoshop benchmark test was 0 to 5%, and the RAM usage was an average of 40%. For the Premiere Pro export, we saw an average CPU usage of 20%, an average GPU usage of 82%, and an average RAM usage of 30%. Now, DaVinci Resolve saw higher benchmarks on the CPU. During the 4K export, we saw an average CPU usage of 95%, an average GPU usage of 30%, and an average RAM usage of 33%. So these tests are very interesting, and we're seeing DaVinci Resolve use more CPU than I would honestly hope for or expect. And we're seeing Premiere Pro optimize the GPU and CPU very well, giving us really nice benchmarks for the export times. If you're looking for a lightweight 17-inch laptop with upper tier benchmarks in nearly every creative professional software, all packed into a sleek, all aluminum, cool and quiet chassis, then the Studiobook 17 is definitely a great pick for you. Just remember to bring along that battery charger and you will have all you need for a standout on-the-go workstation. If you're curious about the exact prices, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Remember, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here on the next one.